afterwards is the situation on the right, where there's no air on the inside and it sends back. So at this point, there'll be no air, no weight pushing outward, only pushing inward from the air outside the hemispheres. And so what that means is it's really, really hard to pull them apart. How hard is it? Well, in the original experiment performed in 1656 in the village of Magdeburg in Germany, it took four teams of horses to pull apart their Magdeburg hemispheres. It's really incredible, the power that air has. But we're going to do the experiment ourselves, because we're scientists here. So I'm going to have Nathan stand up and lead a team in a tug-of-war competition. So I need one. Go ahead and face the audience so they can see you. And on the count of three, one, two, three. Oh, not so easy now, huh? All right, now let's bring Nathan into the picture. And we're going to have you guys do a tug-of-war here. So Nathan, stand on one side and Jock on the other. Grab the rope right up here close to the front. And on the count of three, I'm going to have you pull apart. And just be very careful not to slip and fall, just in case you do manage to do it. And on the count of three, here we go. One, two, three. OK. <laughs> Pretty strong, huh? Was that hard? A lot harder than before, right? Maybe we need some more help from the audience. What do you guys think? Can I have one volunteer from the red team? Okay. And teammates, all right, on the count of three, pull them apart. Ready? One, two, three. There we go. All right. Thank you guys. You can have a seat now. Thanks for your help. All right, so this experiment is a lot smaller than Magdeburg's original one, so it doesn't take quite four teams of horses, but it did take four people, so it's not that easy either. So if I want you to remember anything from this experiment, it's that air has weight, and weight has a lot of power, even if you can't see it. Awesome. Thank you, Chris. And everyone enjoy that demonstration. Yeah. Another exciting demonstration for volunteers. You guys are great. I have another exciting demonstration for you guys. And I want to start off with a question, though. So how many of you have blown bubbles before? Yes, do you guys enjoy blowing bubbles? Awesome. I also enjoy blowing bubbles. Can I have a couple of volunteers to come help me blow bubbles? Come on up. And how about in the back there? Come on up. Remind me of your name again? Grace. It's awesome to see you up here, Grace. We have some very specialized scientific equipment that they are going to use. Oh. You guys should be pulled bigger. And your name, sir? Steven. Awesome to meet you guys. All right, so we are scientists. We are engineers. What scientists and engineers like to do is make very close observations. So you guys, when you blow your bubbles, I want the audience to observe the bubbles. All right, go for it. Give it a shot. <laughs> Why? Go ahead. Oh, those bubbles are beautiful. Awesome job. Thank you guys. All right. While we're looking at the last few bubbles, what do you guys notice about the bubbles? They're colorful. Awesome. Thank you. You guys can take a seat. Did anyone else notice how colorful those bubbles were? No. Yes. So bubbles are very, very special. So bubbles are actually really, really, really thin, right? We don't ever see like super thick bubbles. We see very, very thin bubbles. And because they're so thin, light acts kind of strange on them. So the light comes in and it bends. That's what scientists like to call refraction. So with that light bending in all these different crazy ways, we get all the amazing, amazing colors that we see with the bubbles. So now I think I'm going to try to make a pretty big bubble. You guys interested in that? Yeah. yeah. All right, let's see if I can do it. Oh, Nikki had that. Yeah. Those are hard sometimes. Oh. All right, let's do one more. properties. And so scientists and engineers like to take advantage of these thin properties when they're making really, really, really thin films. And you guys might not know it, but all those sorts of films are on things like television screens, and they use them to make better binoculars and telescopes. It's really important in our everyday lives, and you guys might not even notice. Is that pretty cool? Yeah. I did think that was pretty neat. That was a huge bubble, but it was just one bubble. And I think it would be much more interesting to make millions of bubbles. 
Would you guys like to see that? Yeah. Yeah. I know just how to do it using soda. Does anyone here like to drink soda? Oh, a lot of people. Now, why do you like to drink soda? What is it about if it's different than water? It has flavor. It's sweeter. Absolutely. Does anyone else have anything else that they like about soda? It's carbonated, exactly. So soda, when you taste it, it has a little bit of a different texture than water. It's fizzy. It bubbles up on your tongue. The reason it does that is just what you said. It's carbonated. There's actually carbon dioxide gas trapped inside the soda, just like the carbon dioxide we used in that first experiment with the bubbling cylinders. Now, do you all see any gas bubbles trapped in here? Uh, I don't see any either. But believe it or not, there are actually, there's so much gas trapped in here, there's two two liters worth of gas trapped in every two liter bottle of soda. So there's more gas than there is liquid. But you can't see it because it's all dissolved into the liquid. So if we want to really find out how much gas is trapped in here, we need to think of a way to let all those bubbles out. Now there's one way I know to let bubbles out of soda. That's if you put a straw in it. Have you ever noticed if you put in a straw, a straw in soda, what happens? Bubbles. bubbles. Bubbles seem to form on the straw. The reason that happens is because on the surface of a straw are little pockmarks and divots, and those are perfect places for bubbles to form. Scientists call that nucleation. So what I'd like is a special piece of scientific equipment that has been specially engineered to form <laughs> bubbles with millions of nucleation sites. Chris, do we have something like that? These Mentos seem to be very highly nucleated to me. Can oh. I give a shot? Perfect, fantastic, that's right. Mentos candy, actually if you look at them with the microscope, they are full of little tiny holes and divots. Perfect nucleation sites for carbon dioxide gas bubbles to form. So we're gonna do an experiment to get all of the gas trapped in this bottle out all at once using the Mentos candy. Would you like to see that? Oh, yeah. Yes, and this is gonna be our last demonstration for today. So I'd like you guys to give us a countdown so we can launch it off. Are you ready for an explosion? Oh, yeah. Okay, from five. Five, four, three, two, one. <laughs>